The Life of Ruby Bridges by Elizabeth Raum. Who is Ruby Bridges? When she was just six years old, Ruby Bridges became an American hero. She was the first black child to attend an all-white school in New Orleans. It wasn't easy. People yelled at her. They called her names, but Ruby didn't quit. Her courage changed people's hearts and minds. Ruby's brave bravery inspired others to fight for equal rights. Oh, there's our word inspired. Living under segregation. In May of 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled on a tough case. It was Brown v. Board of Education. This ruling changed life in America. In many states, white and black children went to separate schools. This would, was called segregation. The Supreme Court said that separate schools are not equal. Schools now needed to integrate the mother explains a Supreme Court ruling to her daughter. And here's an old newspaper. It says segregation in schools is outlawed. Oh, look at this timeline on the bottom. A few months later, on September 8, 1954, Ruby Nell Bridges was born. She lived in Tylertown, Mississippi. Her parents worked on a farm. So did her grandparents. When Ruby was four, her family moved to New Orleans, Louisiana. They hoped the bigger city would have better jobs and schools. Most of New Orleans was segregated. Black, white, and white families usually lived in different areas. The New Orleans school had been fighting integration since 1954. Ruby began kindergarten in an all-black school. That spring, a judge ordered the schools to integrate. They had no choice. They began with five African-American first graders. Ruby was one of them. If her parents agreed, she would go to the first to, she would go to first grade at an all-white school. All black schools had less money for staff and supplies. Doesn't seem very equitable. The Bridges had a, dis, a decision to make. Should Ruby be one of the first black kids in an all-white school? Her dad feared, feared trouble, but her mom wanted Ruby to have a better education. The city continued fighting against integration. That September, Ruby began first grade at her old school. White people hold signs and block the doors of an integrated school. Look at the signs they're holding up. Facing angry crowds. On November 14, 1960, Ruby moved to an all-white school. She was the only black child going to William Franz Elementary. The other African-American first graders went to a different school. Ruby's mom went to, with her. So did four federal marshals. I think those are these people in the pictures. They're supposed to be protecting her. People were angry about integration. They took it out on Ruby. They protested. They yelled and threw things. Federal marshals kept Ruby safe as she went to and from school. Ruby did not understand why people yelled at her. Mrs. Henry, Ruby's teacher, was kind and helpful. Many people were not. Parents kept their children home from school. Ruby was the only student in her classroom. She studied alone. She ate alone. When she had to use the bathroom, a marshal walked with her to keep her safe. Ruby's first grade teacher, Mrs. Henry, holds an old photo with her of her with Ruby. Oh, wow, this photo's from the 1960s. Ending segregation. Ruby felt lonely because she had no classmates. Her dad lost his job. So did her grandparents. Ruby's story was in the news. People around the country sent money and support. Slowly, students returned to school. They were not in Ruby's class, but she met them. They became friends. By spring, the protesters went away. A statue in Oakland, California honors Ruby Bridges and other leaders. Ruby entered second grade in the fall of 1961. Other students joined her class. People stopped protesting. Ruby's bravery moved people. Norman Rockwell, a famous artist, painted a picture of Ruby. In it, she walks between the federal marshals. She looks small but proud and determined. The painting was printed in Look magazine on January 14, 1964. Ruby makes friends with kids in her grade. 
equal rights for all. On July 2, 1964, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. Ruby had just finished third grade. This ma act made it illegal to discriminate because of race, color, sex, religion, or national origin. There were no more all-black or all-white schools. Now all schools were integrated. Racism didn't end right away, but this was an important step forward. Reporters watch as President Johnson signs the Civil Rights Act. Thanks to the Civil Rights Act, Ruby went to an integrated high school in New Orleans. After high school, Ruby worked as a tra travel agent. In 1984, she married Malcolm Hall. They lived in New Orleans. Ruby raised four sons. When her nephews attended William France Elementary, Ruby volunteered there. There she is. Ruby reads a book about her life to a first to first graders. Wow. Ruby did not forget her struggle. In 1999, she wrote a children's book about her life. It is called Through My Eyes. She also set up the Ruby Bridges Foundation. It promotes racial tolerance. In 2009, she wrote another children's book, Ruby Bridges Goes to School, My True Story. Ruby wants to create change through education. Ruby signs a copy of her book, Through My Eyes. In the summer of 2011, Norman Rockwell's painting was on display in the White House. On July 15th that year, Ruby visited President Barack Obama. He said, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here today. Today, Ruby talks with children about her experience. Her life proves that one ch child can change the world. President Obama thanks Ruby for her bravery. Wow, it looks like Obama was even inspired by Ruby. That is the end of the story. If you're interested in more, please feel free to um, explore Epic and look up Ruby Bridges.